Okay, so um, in terms of cultural practices, I think um, we have so few fungicides to manage diseases in blueberries that focusing on cultural practices is where I'm going to spend uh, about half of my time today. Uh, so what are cultural practices? Well, that's kind of the indirect approach. It's everything but the spray nozzle, right? It's the, it's the preventatives. It's the uh, starting with clean plants, keeping those plants healthy and vigorous, reducing the spread. So if you do get disease, reducing that spread, stopping it in its tracks. And most of all, in terms of, of disease, is preventing overwintering. So unlike insects where, where they're scouting and management after you see insects, diseases are just the opposite. We look at last year's disease, we look at weather, and we calculate our risk. So we don't want diseases overwintering because we know that that means our risk is much higher the following year. So why does it matter? Who uses cultural practices? Um, organic farmers, those who are certified, that really matters, especially because there are a limited number of um, fungicides available for organic farmers, especially in uh, blueberries. Uh, those who want low input operations, start with cultural practices. You're going to reduce a lot of those risks and not have the need for fungicides um, in general. And then gardeners, those who just don't want to spray at all. Some commercial growers opt for the no spray. Me in my backyard, well, I'm just kind of lazy. I don't spray anyway, So uh, even though I say I will. So everyone should be using cultural practices, whether you are organic or not. And that's what I want to stress more than anything today. So this is for conventional growers as well as organics. Um, those that the buzzword sustainable, everybody says they want to be sustainable. In terms of sust sustainability, we're looking at human safety, uh, preservation of the ecosystem, and protecting our natural resources. So it's kind of all of it lumped into one. So the less we put out there, the more we use cultural practices, the less... Uh, the less uh, spray products we put out there, whether they're organic or conventional, synthetic, uh, the better we are at a sustainable product in general. So I wanted to make sure that today that I know we, we talked about organic, but being organic doesn't mean we're sustainable, and being sustainable doesn't, you know, it's, is I think where we all want to go anyway, whether it's low input, no spray at all, or that certified organic. And that's a decision we all have to make. And our cultural practices fit in there just perfectly with all of those systems. <clears throat> and if you're a conventional grower, I've kind of alluded to this, but um, fungicide resistance, it's, it's really, it's a major issue. And I know we have a couple of people here that don't just grow blueberries. Blueber blueberry are a low input crop anyway. We have some very high input crops that, that are out there and we don't want fungicide resistance to develop. Uh, whether it's organic products or synthetic. Um, overloading, overloading our spray system with inoculum. Now inoculum would be the amount of uh, fungal spores or the amount of uh, bacterial cells or whatever that pathogen is. So if we overload our, our spray system, that spray is going to be less effective. So we don't ever want to overload our system, no matter what kind of uh, product we're using. And these products are expensive. All of them are expensive. And as they become more and more uh, specific, they become more expensive. So um, the more we can use cultural practices, the less of these products we have to put out there. And then, of course, there's time. It takes time to get out there and spray. It takes time to read the spray guide, right? Because those things get more complicated as we go.